righty. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this workshop. We are um, more than blessed of having Legal Shield as a business partner with CSFA. We've had um, several several years in this in this um, business business relationship, and it's been very great working with Phil and also Bill, who uh, unfortunately wasn't able to uh, join us today, but. We also have the um, Batman himself, uh, Mr. Phil Shannon of Legal Shield. Um, so please, Phil, if you would like, um, the floor is yours. Thanks, Esban. I appreciate it very much. I, again, want to welcome all of you to our monthly Worry Less, Live More series. Um, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make your life easier, your life better. Um, Bill sends his apologies and regrets, but unfortunately, dealing with some serious health issues right now. We'll hope, we're hoping those are going to get behind him real soon, but right now dealing with them some stuff. So he couldn't be here, but he's always here in spirit uh, because we as, well, both of us have been working with first responders for uh, pretty much 20 plus years. And we just really relish our relationship with the CSFA relationship, our rel relationship with first responders. And that's why we try and do those to bring back and give back to those who do so much for us. So thank you for all you do. Um, this was an interesting topic. In fact, I was really excited to talk about it uh, when we talk about business management because you wouldn't think in the fire service that business management is uh, something that gets conversed about much, but I'm sure it does. In fact, I know it does, uh, but I wanna talk a little bit about some of the things that you can do to be a better manager. Now, this may be talking about your crew and the people you work with and deal with on a daily basis, but some of you, and I know many firefighters, have businesses on the side. And we'll talk a little bit about running your entrepreneurial adventure, uh, venture, whether you're a, a solopreneur or you have people who work with you. Obviously, there are basic tools that are important for your success. So I'm going to talk about some of my favorite stuff in that regard, uh, because I have been an entrepreneur for nearly 40 years. I started when I was 15, in case people are trying to do the math to figure out how old I am. Um, but, uh, and that's kind of true when I think about it, because gosh, I was the kid who had the lemonade stand. I, I sold a subscription to the San Francisco Chronicle door to door. I did lawns around the neighborhood. So I guess I have been an entrepreneur since I was probably younger than 15, as I think about it. Uh, but I've always liked that. I've always liked to have extra money in my pocket. And when you're young and a kid, when you have extra money in your pocket, you're kind of the superstar of the neighborhood uh, because not many kids have extra money in their pocket. So this was always important to me. So let me talk about a couple things that I think are really important. And, and we can start with obviously the golden rule. Very simply, the golden rule is doing to others as you would have them do unto you. And let me speak from personal experience. I think it's really important that you treat people uh, treat people well, treat people with dignity, be fair, uh, be precise about all that stuff. So the golden rule is something, a general rule of thumb that we can all abide by and adhere to. And the other one I really like is under promise and over deliver. Just as a general consensus, most people tend to over promise and under deliver. I'm trying to get out of the sun for you guys here. Um, but if you under promise and over deliver, and I understand that sometimes you want to do the absolute best for everybody and, and that doesn't change, but a lot of times you set expectations on yourself that you can't meet and that becomes very difficult for you. But again, it becomes very difficult for the people that you're working with or dealing with. So under promise and over deliver. Let me use the example of our service because most of you know Legal Shield provides access to attorneys, get advice, all that, all the stuff that we do. They write letters, make phone calls, review contracts and documents, do the wills and all that stuff. One of the things we have said for years in presentations is our attorneys will get back to you within eight business hours. Well, as of January of 2020, before the pandemic, that's I think that's, it gets confusing on dates now with the pandemic, but January 2020, we changed that rule to uh, four hours. And that was very difficult for some of our bigger law firms for obvious reasons. I mean, the law firm in California takes 12 to 1500 phone calls a day. So to get back to everybody within four hours was a stretch and very difficult for them. Well, I did not change my presentation 
I kept telling people that our law firm will get back to you within eight business hours because I think it's very important to under promise and over deliver. So if you've got something, you need, so let me give you the example of a member calling into our offices. They talk to an attorney or they get a phone call from an attorney back in five hours. If you told them they're going to get a call back within four hours, you look like not the village idiot, but fairly close. But if you tell them eight hours and you, they get a call in five hours, you've, again, under promised and over delivered. So if you keep that general concept with anything you do, I think it makes it really important to understand how under promising and over delivering is so essential to your success in whatever you're doing, managing people or your side business. Also, do what you say you're going to do. How's that for a novel idea? And I hate to put it that way, and I see Esteban grinning, but it's honestly the truth. I mean, a lot of people don't say, do what they're going to say. Like Esteban actually asked me to get these slides to him about six hours ago, and I thought I did, I didn't. So I didn't hold up to my end of the bargain. Luckily, I got them to him a few minutes before the presentation started. But the point is, you need to do what you say you're going to do, and you need to do it even when the time you set it is behind you. Because oftentimes we make commitments to people, even commitments to ourselves, and then the mood leaves us. And what happens when the mood leaves us? Okay, if we don't do that and we promise somebody else we're gonna do something, we disrupt their life. I am adamant about being on time. Uh, I do it, for example, we've done over the last month or so, we finally got back uh, to where we can do uh, in-person enrollments, like the California Highway Patrol is one of our bigger accounts. So I go to a lot of Highway Patrol offices across California. I was just in Redwood City yesterday, Sacramento the day before. Tomorrow I'm going from Salinas to Sacramento. I'm looking for a CHP escort to get there in time. But the point is, um, I do a lot. And I always pride myself on being 15 minutes early. In fact, Vince Lombardi said, if you're on time, you're late. For those who don't know who Vince Lombardi is, he's known as probably the greatest football coach or one of the greatest coaches ever. But he always talked about being on time. He also talked about the fundamentals. And that's a really good idea to make sure you understand the fundamentals of whatever you do. Because when you understand the fundamentals, you can accomplish the things that you need because you, know you know what to do. And you can do that in a timely manner. And here's another novel idea. How about answering your phone? I don't know about you folks, but so many people just don't answer their phone. And I understand maybe I'm not in their contacts or something, but I think you distinguish yourself when you answer the phone. And don't get me wrong, if you're in the middle of something, obviously you cannot answer your phone, but I do have, as most people do have, access to a little reminder or a little message, not a reminder, a message that says, hey, I'm on the phone or I'm driving or whatever you're doing that, does not allow you to get on a phone, answer the phone. And if you do and can't answer the phone, how about just returning phone calls? It really shocks me how infrequently people return phone calls, even when they say they're going to call you. And that comes back to the under promise and over deliver because I think many of us have the best intentions in, in mind to do the right thing but oftentimes we don't do the right thing because life gets in the way. And there's nothing wrong with that. I understand things, priorities change, but return calls. And if you can't return a call, how about a text that says, hey, I'm sorry, I can't get back today. I'm really busy. I'll make sure I get back to you tomorrow. Or is this really important? Can we take care of it tomorrow? Whatever you need to say, just to make sure you care about people. That kind of goes back to the golden rule uh, where you treat people uh, you treat people well. I mean, we all understand the basics of the golden rule. So that's kind of the information that I want to share in regard to leadership. I put some other things together to talk about leadership skills. I think most of you understand what those skills are. Most of those skills do with being compassionate. You know, you can be passionate, but you also have to become passionate. You have to treat people well, you know. You can't be a pushover. I think we understand the basics, but you've got to treat people with a respect and dignity and you'll typically get that back. So that's the information in regard to leadership in regard to developing skills that make you a better manager, a better leader. 
Uh, I know one of the things we wanted to talk about was some of the memberships that we provide that are business related. So we'll get to that in a bit. But Esteban, I understand you had a couple of quick questions you wanted to ask. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for that, Phil. Let me let me pull it up. So one of the questions that I have, um, what are the most important traits in a leader that you've um, that you've encountered? Yeah, and I've done a lot of research on this, and I appreciate the question, Esteban, because um, a lot of people don't take the opportunity to get great, because there's such great information available by just reading. Now there's great available information available through YouTube. You can listen to Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, Grant Cardone, Tony Robbins, a lot of these great people who talk about how to deal with people. So you need to learn how to be a people person. And I know for many people that's difficult. And if you're not a people person, then become an actor. And I say that with my tongue in my cheek, but anyone can be an actor. Anyone can, can you know what it takes to treat people with compassion. You know what it takes to be a people person. Just do it. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I've been hypnotized two or three times. And this may sound like a crazy part of this conversation. And Esteban's probably going, where's he going with this? But let me tell you, about my experiences being hypnotized because I was hypnotized at the state fair in front of probably 500 to 1,000 people. I was in, uh, hypnotized on the stage in, uh, I believe it was, um, it was Lake Tahoe and Las Vegas where I was quote unquote hypnotized. Let me tell you what I felt like I was. I didn't feel like I was ever hypnotized. I felt like I knew exactly what I was doing every moment. I just wanted to do it. So when they said quack like a duck, I quacked like a duck. When they said, uh, if, if they say, Jeremiah, you shout the British are coming or whatever, whatever it was they had me do to make me look like a fool to get laughs out of the audience, I was willing to do it. Now, was I hypnotized? I don't know for sure, but I know that I could learn to do what they wanted me to do. And that's what I'm talking about being a people person. You can train yourself to be a people person. Thanks for that question, that's fun. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, so I have another question here, um, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so uh, in, in regards to, to that, how, how do you deal with hard to handle either coworkers or employees? That's a great question. And there's no right or wrong answer. Um, I'm sure everyone has their own opinion. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes you have to walk away. Uh, let me make that at least clear from my perspective. Uh, and this is in taking a lot of those type of courses. Sometimes you have to walk away and find a better time because sometimes that hard to handle employee is hard to handle for something that has nothing to do with you. I think oftentimes we take it personally when somebody has an issue with us. And it's really not an issue with us. And you know when there is an issue with you. Uh, and sometimes you know when it's not an issue with you. So you know that that person, that individual is probably having a rough day, probably had problems at home. So take a step back and try and not necessarily put yourself in their shoes, but try and understand what they may be, may be going through. Um, I like to say there's only five or six horrible people anywhere in the world. They just travel around a lot, okay? So when you run into those people, just understand their perspective as much as you can. If you have to walk away, walk away. But most importantly, again, we get back to that golden rule is, is treat them as well as you can. That's a great question. And that's always a tough one. I mean, I, I in a previous lifetime, I managed restaurants in between my being an Air Force navigator and all that good stuff. I, I managed restaurants and that was always a difficult thing to do, but you learn, you learn from the experience and you also learn if you, if you have a hard to handle employee and you can't get rid of them because they are very, well, for whatever reason, uh, it's nice to be able to learn from the experience of dealing with those folks. Because oftentimes you'll find things that you can do that break through. And let me tell you, some of my hardest to handle associates with legal shield or when i was employing people some of the ones that were most difficult once you turn them in your direction they can be your best employees and that's something to shoot for 
Thanks for that. Thank you, Phil. Uh, yeah, one one last question. Sure. Um, if you had one, if you had a basic rule on how to be a good leader, what would that be? Well, you know, it's interesting. I'm happy you said that because I talked about the golden rule a lot. Uh, but how about the platinum rule? Anyone know the platinum rule? Most of us know the golden rule, but many of us don't know the platinum rule. And that says, treat others as they would like to be treated. We talk about the golden rule says, treat others as you would like to be treated. But how about treating others how they would like to be treated? That's going to take a little bit of work. So you need to find out how they like to be treated. You know, we have different kinds of learners. People learn through audio, video, whatever. There's one other one that I can't remember, uh, but I, I do remember getting taught that in business school. My point is, if you treat people how they want to be treated, just think how much better that's going to be for your life, your career, all that good stuff. Okay? So do that. The platinum rule, look it up. It's something I just ran into within the last couple of years. I love it. I think it's fantastic. I never thought of that, but it makes nothing but sense. Thanks for that. Did you have anything else, my friend? Uh, no, that is all from okay. my Thank you, Bill. Well, awesome. I appreciate that very much. I'm going to basically highlight, I know many of you came in here when we talked about business. You wanted to get a basic understanding of some of our business plan. So I want to make sure I take just a couple minutes to explain the business plan. And that's actually the next slide that uh, we're going to see. And you may have seen this before, but the home business legal plan. Now it says home. It doesn't mean you have to work out of your home because it just means it's non-W-2 income. And it means you don't have employees. So a lot of you do consulting work. A lot of you may have rental property. Uh, a lot of you may do security work, whatever you do on the side that generates income that is non-W-2 income. In other words, you're 1099 or paid as a self-employed person. We have a legal plan specifically for those needs. As you can see, those legal plans, like our regular legal plan, give you unlimited advice, assistance, and guidance and direction on any legal matter. Uh, no limit to business topics. If your spouse happens to have a business that qualifies under this business legal plan plus, they also get the same benefits. So let's say your wife's an, uh, an HR consultant or your wife's in insurance without employees or a realtor, again, without any employees and you have a security business on the side or you do security work, both of those or all those businesses would be covered under one plan. The legal document review means simply what our personal plan does, it does as well. You can have up to three business contracts or documents reviewed per month. You can also have letters or phone calls made on your behalf for the business. So whether uh, up to six letters or phone calls per year, one per subject matter. The one that sometimes comes in very handy is the debt collection letters on your behalf. So if somebody hasn't paid you, maybe you do some construction stuff or you do some subcontracting or something, something again that generates um, non-W-2 income and you're getting having problems collecting from the responsible party, have a law firm write a letter. I can speak from so many experiences where that letter from the law firm made all the difference in the world. I probably told this story, but I, I, I just love the story so much. It was one of my captains. I, I think he was Daily City Fire Department. I could be wrong, um, but I was doing a, a little presentation and he said, Phil, do you mind if I tell you a quick story? And I, I usually like the quick stories. They're usually pretty good. And he was the captain, so I couldn't say no to him. Uh, but he said, Phil, I'd been with the, I, I had something happen about six months ago. There's a big windstorm. He lived in Pacifica. And I guess there was a big windstorm that uh, knocked over a tree from a neighbor's house. And that tree actually damaged his roof. Um, so he called the Good Hands people who he'd been with for 20 plus years. And the Good Hands people had the adjuster come out and the adjuster denied the claim. He had no clue what that was all about. So he called his buddy who worked for the Good Hands people. His buddy said, uh, you know, talk to this guy, John Smith. Let's make up that name. Talk to John Smith and he'll help you out. Well, he called John Smith. John Smith didn't help him out. So what did he do? He called the law firm. The law firm wrote a letter. He told me during that uh, when, he's when he wanted to tell his little story, he said, Phil, within a week, I got a check for $9,000. He said, it was great to get the check for $9,000, but what was even better, I found someone to repair my roof for $7,000. So he was a smart guy as well. So the point is, sometimes a letter or a phone call can get you 
results that our letters or phone calls can't get. You also have access to out-of-state consultations, specialty matters, things like that, intellectual property, antitrust, immigration. Uh, you can actually set up consultations where you can speak to a specialist in that area. And then one that I really like because I've dealt with this so often, uh, if you get audited for your Schedule C or your Schedule E, uh, we will represent you that audit, give you up to 50 hours of a tax attorney's time. And the cost of that membership, now this is a supplement, so it's added to your legal plan. It's an additional $12.95 a month, although depending on, take a look at your pricing, because we obviously have special pricing for CSFA members, and we do have a little bit of reduced pricing uh, for non-CSFA members who are watching this, and we'll get to that in just a bit. And then the set, next slide, if you go to that, um, Esteban, is our business legal plans. Now, this is for companies that you know that have lots of employees. And let me explain one of the benefits we have through the CSFA is Esteban has spoken about and we've talked about. I know, I think we have a, another session that's going to talk about that in a little more detail. Uh, we give back to the CSFA. We give back a percentage of the uh, memberships that people purchase throughout the organization. And most of you know that obviously we have lots of fire departments who offer our services and we give back to the CSFA this way. But let me tell you a better way. How many of you who are watching this know people that have businesses? that could use the services that we offer. How about giving Bill or I a call, letting us help those people. If they get the membership, the CSFA is gonna win. The CFA is gonna get money in their coffers, non-dues revenue. They don't have to make any changes, any adjustments. Let's help the CSFA. So you can do that by introducing us to people who have businesses that you have a relationship with because we don't have those relationships. You know, I think most of you know that we have a couple of school districts that actually generate revenue for the CSFA. Obviously they're not CSFA members, they're teachers, they're custodians, they're special, whatever they are, but those have been referred to us by CSFA members and we have a special designation where they actually, those memberships actually generate revenue for the CSFA and not just one time, that revenue is generated in perpetuity. So you can see, we have legal plans that are up to about $184 a month uh, that covers the business and up to five users of that business. So that's our business plan. So again, the thing that you can do if you wanna really help the CSFA is find us people who have businesses and let us help them. Because I can tell you, most businesses are paying three to $500 an hour for competent legal advice and sometimes getting it, sometimes not most of the times not contacting because they're afraid of three to $500 an hour. You know, I have attorneys who jokingly tell me they can't afford themselves. These are friends who say, I can't afford myself and I don't disagree because I don't think anybody wants to or can uh, on a consistent basis afford those kind of fees. We make it affordable for people to have access. And the next one I think is specifically, if I remember correctly, the next slide, this is specifically about the two programs we offer. Uh, one is the legal plan uh, and the CSFA offer also is the identity theft protection. And I just wanna highlight these because you may also know companies, for example, that person who wants the business plan, they may have 20, 30, 50, 100, 500 employees. They may be a school district, they may be a city, they may be a county. Most of you know the city of Sacramento is one of our accounts. The city of San Jose, we have lots of, uh, lots of different types of accounts. So if you know somebody who's in that position of power, whether it's a um, superintendent of schools, whether it's the city manager or the mayor or whoever it is who is can make some decisions in regard to services, let's talk to them about offering our services to all the employees. Now, I'm not gonna go over all the things you see in front of you, you can take a look, and most of you know what our plan provides, but how about being able to offer this to a company with, you know, Microsoft is one of our customers. I, obviously that wasn't a CSFA referral, unfortunately, but let's say one of you knew Bill Gates really well and you said, hey, Bill, you should offer this to the employees. And what if 100,000 of the employees get our service? Well, the CF, CSFA will be living, at, living large, as we say. I don't know if they say that 
Esteban, do they say that anymore? You don't have to answer. Um, but uh, whether, whether or not the important thing to understand is we can help generate non-dues revenue. So we can offer this as a voluntary employee benefit. Um, some companies actually choose to fringe it, uh, in other words, pay for it, but if that's completely up to them, we typically offer this a voluntary benefit. But you can see, think about it. Why would a company not offer a service that's gonna help reduce absenteeism, increase productivity at no cost to their bottom line? Because think about it. Legal Shield doesn't cost them anything if they're making it voluntary. They're just offering it to the employees and those that take advantage are much more likely to be at work because they're not dealing with a legal situation. What do employees do if they have to get, if they're getting audited by the IRS during the day or they wanna fight a traffic ticket or they have some legal calamity? They call in sick. They don't call in legal, they call in sick. Our membership allows you to reduce some of that at no cost to your bottom line. And then the one key thing is the 24 seven emergency access. I mean, very simply, I think our world could be a lot better place if people had access, if they're ever arrested, detained, questioned in a serious automobile accident and had access to an attorney 24 seven. And that's what our membership provides. So you can see the rest of the benefits. I'm not gonna go over all the details, but important to understand that you can refer us to these type of companies and the CSFA can be the big winner. I mean, a big, big winner, okay? Next slide, I think, talks about our identity theft plan. I'm gonna hit on this very briefly because we actually did a segment, if I remember correctly, uh, three or four segments ago specifically about identity theft. Let me not insult your intelligence and get right to the point. Why were we chosen by Forbes Advisor? Why were we chosen by Cybersecurity News? We didn't even put Javelin and a few others that have ranked us the best identity theft plan in the United States. And those of you who've heard the presentation before, you know we're about a third of the price of companies like LifeLock. Why? It's because we provide services that many of them, most of them, I used to say all of them, but I'm not quite sure yet because the evolution of the industry, but we do things that very few companies do. One is the unlimited service guarantee, largest guarantee in the industry. The $1 million insurance protection means if there's out-of-pocket expenses, you have access to getting that help. But let's talk about the most important part, that complete identity restoration. What that simply means, if you or any covered family member becomes a victim of identity theft, you actually give limited power of attorney to a licensed private investigator. That investigator is actually assigned to your account and he or she actually does whatever it takes for as long as it takes to get you back to where you were before the breach occurred. Let me use this example because I think it's the best. I have a large uh, computer repair company. They do computer repairs all across the country. They're the big stuff. About 100 employees. I, they were one of my groups and I had talked about 50 of the employees, about 25, 30 of them had the membership. And in the middle of that year, before my next year's presentation, I get an email from the HR director and she emails me and I'll tell it straight exactly how she put it. She says, Phil, do you guys sell that LifeLock thing? <laughs> That's exactly what she said, Esteban. Do you sell the LifeLock thing? Uh, and I didn't correct her. I just said, yes. And she said, great. We would like to purchase it for all of our employees and their families. I said, okay, this requires a conversation. I'm gonna give you a call, Marie. So I called Marie and I said, Marie, what's up? I go, I'm excited that you guys all want the service, but something must've happened for you to be calling me about getting the service. She goes, well, Phil, we had two of our employees over the last few months who've been victims of identity theft. And both of those employees are really important to us like all our employees are, but those two employees in particular, literally had to take time away from work to clean up their identity theft situation. And she didn't want that, the boss, the owner, didn't want that to happen ever again. So that's why this service makes so much sense for companies. So again, back to what we already spoke about, if you know companies that we can help, please 
get us their information. Just get us the name of the, all you have to do is get us the name of the decision maker. Let us call that person. Let us use your name, of course, because we want to be able to say that Esteban referred us or George referred us or John Smith referred us. We want to have a name when we make that phone call. So it's not just a sales call because you know how companies feel about sales calls. So we contact that person, we help their business and the CSA is the big winner. So that's the identity theft plan. I'm not gonna go into all the details about the program. You can read, I don't need to read for you. So again, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, if I know Esteban, thank you for your questions. If you have questions, you can contact myself, Phil Shannon, that's my number right there. I'm in the greater San Jose area, actually in San Jose, exactly. And then Bill Butkovich, uh, my partner, who let's all say a word of whatever you, whatever your words are, say a word of let's hope he gets better real soon. But Bill Butkovich, I have his number down there as well. And if you're a member of the CSFA, you can see right there on the CSFA website, you can register and get more information about the services we provide. I think there's a little video that explains it in a little more detail. And again, you can always contact myself or Bill. We're happy to lead you through the registration process. The fabulous thing about our service is a month to month membership. There's no contractual obligation whatsoever. We keep 5 million people happy uh, on a month to month basis. And if you're not a CSFA member, why not become one? I mean, guys, let's help the people who help us. So become a member of the CSFA. And to be honest with you, if you like the plans you just heard about, becoming a CSFA member, you'll save more money in becoming a CSFA member. Save more money, I'm sorry. Save more money with the Legal Shield membership than it costs you to be a CSFA member. So if you wanna get the best rate available, you need to be a CSFA member. So with that, I wanna thank you so much for your kind attention. I wanna thank you for looking in on what we do and how we do it. I wanna thank Esteban again uh, for being such a great host. I'd like to thank everyone uh, who was able to make it. Esteban, I'll turn it back to you and let you wrap it up. Thank you very much for that, Phil. Wonderful presentation. I, I took a lot of um, a lot of great, great notes and pinpointed a lot of stuff that in the future, when I do um, open up my own business, I definitely know who to turn to. Um, well, other than that, uh, thank you very much, Phil, for your time. And I know that the members are very fortunate to have uh, Legal Shield as a partner. Uh, I love I love this business relationship that CSFA and Legal Shield has, um, and and all the benefits that uh, that this company is providing for our members. So again, we really appreciate it, Phil. Esteban, my pleasure, and, and good luck in all your entrepreneurial endeavors. There's nothing like being an entrepreneur. So good for you. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.